Today, we're getting an inside look at Justin's 1.3 billion power Rise of Kingdoms account. And you've seen Justin in my live streams many times donate very generously to my channel. And so today, he's given us an inside look at his commanders, equipment, and more. So stick around in this video for the full breakdown of Justin's absolutely stacked Rise of Kingdoms account. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today we're checking out Justin's absolutely insane Rise of Kingdoms account, which is currently at 1.348 billion power. That's right, 1 billion 348 million power with 78 million dead troops. And this account is only 791 days old. This is a very young account to be at. Certainly ever achieving this amount of power is kind of insane. Uh, but to get to this point, Justin estimates that he's spent $1,400 a day. So when I did some sort of rough math on like, what does that equal out to? We're looking at $1,107,400. Plus, by the way, on some days he's spending more because, you know, in KVK things get a little crazy. Obviously, over a million dollars spent on a mobile game is a lot of money. So it's really cool to see an inside look at the sorts of things you can gain access to if you're spending that kind of insane money in a mobile game, which most of us realistically will never do. And just for context, as a reminder, uh, I like to say in spending videos, prioritize your family, save for retirement, um, make sure you have an emergency fund. These are all far more important goals than spending in a mobile game. But it's always fun to get a peek at people who have gone completely over the top. Now, we're getting a look at his speed ups here, which is, I think, interesting to see. But this is the sort of dude that is going to be gemming troops in order to gain the kind of power they want to gain for gaining uh, city themes, zenith of power, all that kind of stuff. In addition... We can look at his boosts here, and the thing that I saw that really caught my attention is that he's got 617 4-hour 50% army expansions, which is pretty funny. I mean, it will take a lot of doing to burn through all of those 50% expansions, but the equipment is where things go really off the rails, and it's very fun to look at. He's got, I think, at least four of each set of legendary equipment. I mean, he's got infantry. He's got cavalry. He's got archers. He's also got leadership, talented equipment. Because, I mean, hey, you could use it in Canyon. You use it to defend your city. Even at one point, um, I believe that, like, archer leadership stuff, well, you know, with Honda Tanakatsu, people were debating that was a thing. In fact, technically in Champions of Olympia, that was meta for a while. Um, so, overall, he's got 90 pieces of legendary equipment if I counted that correctly, and at least 38 of those are special talented, which is a lot. Not enough, actually, to unlock all of the iconic crystal achievements. I think he's two away from actually getting that, but he's really close. He's even got two talented rings of doom, okay, and the epic gear flex here on all his gatherers. Just because he spent a bunch of money doesn't mean he, you know, he's not going to gather some resources here as well. Look at all his gathering equipment, man. Oh, my God. That, that is probably more gathering equipment than you need, but no matter which of your gathering commanders is randomly selected as the primary, gosh bless it, they're going to have some gathering equipment on there. Oh man. Okay, maybe, maybe some of that's a little excessive, but what are you going to do with all those bones you get, right? Right? Uh, now to get the sort of equipment that he's got here, I mean, he's even got all these full patterns. Oh my gosh. So a lot of crafting possibilities here in his future for Justin. Uh, even when, if, ranged equipment and commanders come into game, right? Like, he'll be able to adjust his collection as needed. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it is a stunning collection of equipment and commanders. The accessories are the area where, like, obviously he's got some room to build more of those legendary accessories. But he's only been in a small number of Season of Conquest KVKs. Remember, the account is really young. So there's only so many opportunities he's had to get Rings of Doom, Horn of Fury, and so on. Um, and those are really the big ones. Now you can get Dagger other ways. I think generally more as web, you only need one of those. Um, but that, that collection of equipment is absolutely insane. And we'll see some of that on his commanders in just a minute. 
And you can see he's got some really nicely built out full sets of equipment, whether he's rallying archers or he's doing stuff with infantry or cavalry. I think his cavalry set was also really nutty. 21,000 extra gold stars. Hello. Okay. Some extra commander sculptures here floating around. Some of these, I suppose you can get rid of, particularly the epic sculptures. You trade those in during KVKs. You get some gold heads. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And I actually didn't realize that the uh, relics show up in your other section. I never scrolled down there to see that. So there you go. But let's get a look at his commanders here, because obviously equipment without commanders is an issue, or commanders without equipment would also be an issue. And he's got almost every commander expertise which is pretty impressive for an account of his age. And I think his strategy has always been to sort of build up his account a bit in a smaller kingdom, and then to make his way to an Imperium kingdom sometime down the road. Wink, wink. Hopefully we'll see you in 254. Here's his equipment set uh, for infantry. This is an amazing set. He's not going for the full six-piece bonus. He's instead gone for the Hope Cloak and also Eternal Knight. This is a leadership set. Um, and there's something going on here that I'll just point out, right? Uh, the gloves, leadership, cavalry, and the, and the weapon, leadership, archers. Okay, leadership, archers, I definitely get. If you were doing something with like Honda Tadakatsu in uh, Champions of Olympia, that that was like a thing, right? Uh, but the leadership cavalry stuff is also interesting. And if you have been noticing... Maybe maybe Justin has been noticing here as well. But if you look at what the top tier Osiris League teams are doing, it seems to be running full cavalry, leadership crit equipment, and you run like Ethel Trajan in mid. That seems to be like a really popular thing right now. Um, I don't know how long that will be meta, but for those of you that are like, oh, leadership talented cavalry stuff, that's bad. I, I think you would actually be surprised if you look more closely at what some of these top tier teams are doing. They take Trajan and Ethel, usually Ethel Primary. They're running full leadership, uh, talented cavalry equipment. Anyways, um, this is the set that he's got defending his city, you know, in case somebody decides to rally him at 1.3 billion power. And because he's got so much, I'm sure his Canyon team here is decked out. He's got Zeno. We were talking earlier about Gilgamesh being a project that, you know, he's kind of working on. But um, obviously, Boudicca Henry is still really, really good. He's got Henry expertise. He's got Jan Ziska expertise. Here's his Cav gear, by the way. Uh, fully crit, iconic, beautiful set of equipment. His Archer gear, really beautiful set of equipment. The Talented Ring is absolutely amazing. Horn is a great choice. Full Archer set is also a really great choice here. So, I mean, the dude has got an absolutely stacked account. The only commanders he's missing, and I'll pause it here. We've got Trajan. Uh, that he's still working on. We've got uh, CJ, Moctezuma, you can basically ignore. You've got Charlemagne, Lubu, Suleiman, and Bert, okay? And I think you could skip Bert, and you're probably not going to miss him. Moctezuma and Lubu and Charlemagne and Suleiman are basically irrelevant. CJ is good in the open field. Like, if you have him expertise, do you use him in the open field? You do. Um, but I don't know that you go out of your way to expertise him. I have him expertise on my restart account. He's fine, but he's not out of this world. So, I mean, his he is in a great spot commander-wise now. I mean, an absolutely amazing spot. He's I mean, he's got more commander's expertise than I do. And my account is like 1,400 days old, like twice as old as his account. Sheesh. I mean, yeah. So, the account is stacked. And we'll look at some of his commander pairings in just a minute here and, and what he uses in the open field. Here we go. We get a look. What's he got for us? So uh, I asked to see, like, what are some of the pairings that he's running? I'll pause it here. He's got Nevsky with William. Great combo. He's got Skippy with Honda. Amazing combo. XY with Joan. Obviously amazing. Uh, he's got Guan with Leo. Boudicca with Cyrus. These are all really great choices because... I mean, the dude is obviously running seven marches if he's in Season of Conquest. And he's got a lot of, a lot of other options here as well. Uh, as we scroll down, he's got Attila and Takeda. He's got Pakal and Harold. He's got Nebu Esong. Here's an alternate pairing uh, with his Skippy. He's got Skippy Alex. 
He's got Amani and Art together. So like he could basically run whatever he wants in the open field. And he's got, as I was mentioning earlier, like four sets of equipment for each troop type. They aren't all crit for each troop type. I mean, that takes a really long time to do. Uh, but he's got some really wicked equipment. And as far as the city themes go, he's got the Star Palace for Archer Defense. He's got the Babylonian Gardens for 15. Oh, no, it's 10% infantry attack. GG. GG, they nerfed that one. Well, they didn't nerf it. They just released better stuff. Uh, the Frozen Fortress, he's got 10% infantry defense. He's got the Island Fortress, which is 5% skill damage, which is really good. So this is four legendary themes. Uh, Atlantis, that's five legendary themes. The infantry health is really, really good. Six, there's the Dynastic Conqueror. I love this one for the open field. Extremely strong. There's the Call of Eternity. Seven, okay, that's cavalry attack. Is there another one? Eight, Supreme Warrior. 15% infantry attack. Nine, Oh, Star Palace, I think we looked at that already. Sheesh. So yes, Justin has had an absolutely meteoric start in Rise of Kingdoms. And what got him interested in the game? Well, he said he started playing during the pandemic. A friend suggested that he give it a try. He said he was a big fan of the Command and Conquer series, and he said it was a similar format. And it, and then, you know how it goes with Rise of Kingdoms. You kind of lose track of your spending and your, 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 how much you, you have invested into the game, right? Invested is a word used very loosely. Um, but he said he averages $1,400 a day when he's not in KVK. Obviously, in KVK, there's more. If there's events or miscellaneous pop-up bundles, then it jumps up a bit. So when you math that out, 791 days old, $1,400 a day, I mean, you're looking at over $1.1 million in Rise of Kingdoms. And he said initially he was going to stop at 100 million power. Then he got to 250 million power. And then he hit 500 million power. And now his goal is just to kind of play the game as long as it remains fun, which is pretty cool. So uh, he doesn't really have a power goal. He doesn't have a kill goal, right? Like, unlike other whales who've come in and they, you know, they, they've got these objectives, okay? You can look at Nefisto as an example. He says he wants to be the most powerful player in the game. We'll see if he ever gets there, okay? And if you want to see the full drama series about Nefisto, I'll have a card up in the top and I'll remind you of that at the end. Um, but his goal is to just kind of have fun. And I think it's been smart. You know, currently he's in 1854. This is a certainly smaller kingdom than a big Imperium kingdom. He can accumulate more sculptures, build up his account. But now his account's pretty built up. And I think the game plan for him is to move over to a big Imperium. Hopefully 254 is where that will be. We'd definitely love to have you in 254, especially in SW. I think you'd have a lot of fun here. But you know, our work in 254 speaks for itself. And he said, you know, my ultimate goal would be to join an Imperium Kingdom next season. I definitely have one in mind, so I'm just enjoying my last KVK in 1854 with my friends and family for now. And I think this is not news to a lot of the folks that he's in a kingdom with. I think they already know that that's kind of his game plan to ultimately make his way over to a big Imperium. And I mean, big Imperiums are crazy. They're really fun. And when you're at 1.3 billion power, and you want to actually flex a little bit with those troops, burn them down in a KVK, I think that uh, a big Imperium is a pretty solid place to go. Now, that's not to say he isn't getting his fair share of fighting. I mean, he sent me this report with his archers, in case you were wondering how that archer gear works out. Yeah, pretty. it's pretty good. This reports uh, 11 million deads to 20 million deads. The old Boudicca Henry working on a Xeno YSS here. We were talking about the virtues of, like, do you need the Gilga or not? Um, and he's currently sitting at, I think it's like 150 universal legendary commander sculptures. My general guidance is to save up for the next meta. So, I mean, like, look, he's got enough commanders. He's got enough stuff. He could go try to expertise Gilgamesh. And if it shows up in the wheel, like, yeah, he should spin it. Um, but, uh, I probably would hold off on spending too many universal sculptures just to make sure when new commanders land in the game, which presumably is going to be in December, which presumably is going to be infantry. And my guess is that there's going to be a conquering commander. We're due for an infantry rally and an open field commander. Right? You probably want to get access to those. And he's got the city themes to support it. He's got the equipment. So uh, yeah, man, really amazing account. I really appreciate your taking the time to send me all this stuff to share with everybody. Uh, the sort of stuff that you could have and the sort of stuff he's got in his absolutely stacked 791 day 1.1 million dollar rise of kingdoms account dang if you enjoyed this video throw a like on here and subscribe to the channel it supports the channel and is 100 free for you to do and lets me know that you want to see more content like this 
Should I go ask other people that are super high power if I can interview them and get a look at their account? And if you have any other questions for Justin or things that you'd want to ask, leave a comment down below and let me know. A big thank you again to Justin for taking the time to share with me this footage and your plans for the account. And if you're looking for another video about Justin's account, I know OmniArc made one of those a few months back, so you can get a look at how the account has progressed since then. Or alternatively, you could go check out my video series about Nefisto. I'll have two cards here and here in the end screen, one about the insane civil war, and then another where I actually got to chat with him a little bit.